Thanks for staying with us on this edition of Visions. Excited about our guest. We're, we're always happy to have our good friend, Mr. Charles Lewis, who is the CEO of Supreme Cleaning Incorporated. Mr. Lewis, thanks again for coming to be with us on Pleasure. the program. We always, we always enjoy. Thank you for your, your partnership and uh, your support of the program uh, ongoing. And so we just like to make sure that our viewers know about you and the great services that you've been providing. I like your tagline, which says that we do it right the first time. That's our goal. So you, you believe in excellence and execution? It's correct. Yes. All right. Correct. Well, well, uh, well I, I saw on your website your mission statement. I'll just try to go through it a little bit so you can just <laughs> kind of define what, what, what it was that we mean by it when you say that your, your goal is to become an international full service maintenance company providing multiple building and grounds maintenance services through st strategic partnerships through teaming agreements and joint ventures. What does Correct. that mean, Ms. Lewis? Well, it means that you can cast the broadest net that you possibly can by working with others. Mm. Um, the brand itself is all, if you do your homework and you do it right the first time, it's a compliment to your brand. Mm. But if you want to cast the broadest net possible, you've got to be uh, willing to have strategic alliances mm. and partnerships, mm. teaming agreements. Mm. And I see that as uh, one of the major areas that we can really grow. Mm, that's good, strategic alliances, I like that word. Um, and so um, what kind of alliances that do you feel has position you to where you are now in, in your business? How does that work for you? We've had some, we've had some positive <laughs> relationships. Let's talk about entrepreneurship, and good and bad. We've good had bad. Some, some of the others that weren't necessarily so. Mm. But you learn from each and every one of those relationships. Mm. And that's a, that's a part of life mm. itself. Um, I firmly believe we don't learn when everything is going great. Mm. We learn when everything is challenging, mm. when you're put to a test. Mm. That's when you have the opportunity to grow. Mm. So we're still mindful of that. Our goal hasn't changed in developing the right strategic alliance, mm -hmm. but we're looking at doing some things um, in the, uh, outside of the U.S. Okay. And um, hopefully it's going to come to pass. Wow. Okay, that's great. Well, now you are a, a world thinker, a global leader, and uh, Air, I think Air Force veteran. Air Force veteran. Uh, you know, go Air Force, me too. Yeah, and, no. uh, and so uh, the way that you came to work, what you're doing now, um, you also got a history in, in investigations, yes. federal government. So yes. you, you, have a, you have a diverse background which positioned you for what you're doing now. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, we've been blessed. I, I have. Uh, I retired from the federal government as a civil rights investigator, mm -hmm. and I was privileged to do the investigations and mediations with the Black Farmers lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of years doing that, I was detailed to investigate strictly uh, presidential appointees for abuse of power and misconduct within USDA all over the country. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. All right. And so how did you make the transition for the, you know, of course, you know, you are an entrepreneurship trainer. How did you make the transition into what you're doing today? Well, I, actually, it's kind of strange because I was sitting in a class at Nova Southeastern University for a PhD. Okay. And it hit me that I'm a businessman. I'm not, I have no desire to teach or publish. And that was my last class that mm. I took. And everything I did from that point on was geared towards entrepreneurship. Mm. I believe that as a people, that's our key, mm -hmm. that's our future, and you have to develop some thick skin and stay focused on the prize. Anything else is a distraction. Well, one of the things that you've done to uh, help facilitate the, you know, the growth of your business is that you've gotten um, uh, yourself positioned as a, as a veteran-owned business, uh, yes. a, a DBE with disadvantaged business enterprise, MBE, minority business yes. enterprise, and and uh, I think you told me you're certified with uh, the VA. Yes, I am. Uh, and uh, so uh, all these certifications and designations, did they take a long time? And uh, what's been the benefit to, to your well, business? Uh, first and foremost, uh, the, the, you play the hand you're dealt. Um, there's no say and no when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away and when to run. Um, your certifications uh, get your foot in the door. Uh, 
I'm a businessman who happens to be a service disabled vet, who mm -hmm. happens to be an African American. Mm -hmm. I'm a businessman first and mm -hmm. foremost. Um, we have to develop a mindset that we're out here to do a quality work for our clients and if that DESIC certification will allow you excess, then it's up to you. You've got the opportunity now to build that brand. Mm. And from that, uh, it's a cumbersome process for a lot of people. Um, with the VA, with the DBEs and whatnot, they don't have the patience. But if you've got the patience to do those things, to put your house in order, opportunities do come as a result. Mm. That's good, that's good, I like that. One of the other things that you um, offer as a service uh, for your clients is that you are a green company. Yes, what we does are. What that mean? Uh, we're, uh, long before sustainable became the, the operative word, uh, we were simply a green company. We used biodegradable products. Uh, back in the late 80s, I developed one of the first recycling programs for southeastern Michigan suburb outside of Detroit. It's still in existence today. I've always believed that if we did not take care of our environment, at some point it would come back to harm us. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And so as you have uh, utilized your, your green uh, designation, uh, has that improved your bottom line, improved business? Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the companies that, that I contract with, they, they are really interested in having a workplace environment that's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, using toxic chemicals can result in allergic reactions and different things, that, which means days off mm -hmm. uh, for the employees. So it's a symbiotic relationship, I think, with the green mm -hmm. or sustainable, mm -hmm. um, and using those chemicals that, that are not uh, harmful, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Well, you've been in business for uh, 20 years now, and... Uh, <laughs> no, uh, 11. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like 20. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not, not 20? No, not no. 20, 11 okay. years. Okay, okay, 11 okay, years I thought I saw year. 20. All right, all right, on your way to 20. All right, and so, so wh what have been some of the lessons learned? You talked about the learning process of developing uh, strategic partnerships. Uh, well, what do you learn? You're saying that not all partnerships work out the way you think. Exactly. Um, something my dad told me when I was a little boy, all money wasn't good money. Uh. Uh, I've gotten call, received calls from companies across the country mm -hmm. because of my service disabled vet status. Mm. Uh, that they couldn't bid on VA projects, but I could. Mm. Um, and I said no, because I saw that, that uh, time has taught me that there was no symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. They simply wanted that designation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my word is worth far more than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, good, good. Well, one of the things that we see a lot about in um, the uh, media is disaster restoration, because we have a lot of things, we got a lot of calamities going yes. on uh, across the country. Uh, how does it work, this disaster uh, restoration component uh, in your business? Well, five or six years ago, we decided to diversify. Mm -hmm. uh, my background working in the building department originally in Michigan helped prepare me for a, a lot of that. I, I was the resident expert for lead contamination, things of that sort for the community that I worked for. So that's how I got my, actually my introduction into that noise pollution, lead uh, based paints and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. And we just saw it as a natural extension of some of my life experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, we were blessed to work with uh, a young man out of Birmingham uh, and he licensed me to work with him, uh, wet out now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that. And we, we've done a lot of work in the area uh, for water damage and mold remediation. Mm -hmm. Um, and we expect to grow mm -hmm. um, uh, even more so with that. So when there's a situation that happens, um, does the insurance company call you or do you get just for education purposes or do you get calls from the actual direct client? We get combination of calls. We get calls from the client. Mm -hmm. We now have a working relationship with certain insurance companies mm -hmm. where we can get calls. And so it works both ways. 
and it's, it's, it's important to develop the relationship with the insurance uh, companies mm -hmm. as well as the public. That's so. good. That's good. Well, you know, you've got a you got a great client list. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Your your past and present client list includes Al Dot, Alabama Power, uh, Enterprise Rental Car. Uh, you got the Chamber, Hewlett Packard, AIDT. You just you know you trying to stack the deck in your favor. Well, I <laughs> wish I could. Uh, there's there's still room to grow. Okay. And that's that's what this thing is all about. It's about growing in life instead of just going through it. Amen. Amen. That's a great. That's a great quote there. Growing in life versus going to it. Uh, well, I, I'm just always inspired by uh, you know these educational sessions. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the educator we call you entrepreneurship educator. And so we always really like that. Uh, one of the things that spot as far as you walking the walk and not just talking the talk. As far as education, we always talk about your daughter and yes. uh, your daughter graduated high school. Correct. And you know, some of our uh, local uh, folks may not be happy with this decision, but you had to do what you had to do. That's and she's exactly going to right. college. Where's she going to college? Blue. <laughs> Go blue. Go big blue. Big blue. <laughs> University of Michigan. But, but people don't know that you actually are from originally. That's correct. Uh, you know, we, yeah. we, you know. yeah, we were blessed we'll that right. uh, she was sought out by several colleges. Um, she graduated from the Alabama School of Fine Arts in Birmingham. Okay. And um, she received some offers from George Mason, a uh, couple of other universities on the East Coast, uh, UAB. Uh, but Michigan offered her the best opportunity, a full four-year academic. Wow. And uh, she's going there to be a double major, theater, and psychology. Wow. Well, we certainly want to say, I've, you know, I've you know, talked to you often about your daughter and how you've been supporting her. And, and that, the high school that she went to, that was in Birmingham? Birmingham. And so, you know, you released her to go and do that. And, and that, that's really powerful stuff. So, so your labor has not been in vain. <laughs> Thank goodness. Amen. <laughs> well, thank God for that. Well, well, Mr. Lewis, we always appreciate talking to you, and uh, we certainly want your business to continue to grow. We want, we want you to continue to stack the deck because we know that you're going to help other people uh, as you are able. And so thanks for coming again to be with us on the program. That's what it's all about. Okay, Sam. we're going to look for you coming back and do some more information for us. And that's going to do it for us on this edition of Visions with Mr. Charles Lewis, the CEO of Supreme Cleaning Incorporated. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.